Welcome to Fun For Free, I'm your host Mac Chista, and welcome to the show where we take a look at games you can get right now for free. That's right, as long as you can get the bulk of a game's content for the princely sum of nothing, it could make its way onto the channel. Today the name of the game is One-Armed Cook, a sort of jokey, fast-paced restaurant simulator. So just a quick heads up, the gameplay footage is a little choppy, I'm really not sure why, but I can definitely say that the game runs a lot more smoothly than whatever we've got going on here. The objective of One-Armed Cook is to serve your patrons as fast as possible. You're put on an overall time limit to serve your customers. You can fill out orders quick enough, time is replenished, and the game continues. When you make a certain amount of money, you you win. The main thing you'll have to do is learn and memorize recipes to serve out to your guests, but on the side you'll also need to wash dishes, buy and replenish your ingredients, and put out any fires that may come up. And there's a lot to do and the game can get pretty hectic and overwhelming as you're running around trying to beat the time limit, and that's pretty much the fun of it. You begin to memorize recipes instead of referring to the cookbook, you become adept at managing the machines you use to cook the food, you learn when to take time aside to order ingredients and pick up their deliveries. It's definitely a game that you can get the hang of. There's different levels with different sort of layouts and recipes to cook, all varying in complexity. The ice cream store is as simple as putting scoops of ice cream on a cone and giving it to the customer, but in Benny's Burger Bar you have to cook the hamburgers and bacon, toast the buns and slice the cheese, then put it on the plate. In Freddy's Fried Chicken you'll have to drop chicken and fries into the fry grease, and in those levels you're usually cooking multiple things and using several machines at once, so you're constantly juggling all these different sort of objectives. Peter's Pizzeria is probably my favorite because it's not just a matter of just throwing things on an oven, you you have to flatten the dough, put the sauce in a can opener, use a ladle to put the sauce on, throw on the toppings, put the pizza on a paddle, put it in the oven, then slide it onto a plate. It's one of the more standout levels in the game. And there's a few other levels as well, but those were my favorites. I've gotta say, for a free game, it offers a pretty good variety within its level, giving it a decent amount of playtime if you care enough to get into it. A nice touch is the game's XP system. Really not needed in a game like this, but they went the extra mile for it, so that's pretty cool. Every time you level up, you get new cosmetics and stuff, it doesn't really affect the gameplay, but it's still nice to have. What's also of note is the game's wonky physics system. Like I said, it's a somewhat jokey game, and part of the fun is it's kind of the wonkiness. The game has multiplayer, I haven't really dipped my toes into it, but I can see the appeal. You can have different people doing different jobs, communicating with each other to stay on top of things, and really with the goofy nature of the game, it's pretty obvious that it was meant to be played with your friends in a Discord server for a quick laugh with the buds. There's also a cook-off mode where you compete with up to three other players to cook a number of dishes the fastest. I haven't actually been able to get into a proper game, but it, it looks fun. I did run into a few bugs, I wouldn't say it's anything too big, but in the ice cream level, customers would say I got their order wrong when I got it right. Sometimes the computer wouldn't let me order things and would just kind of spaz out. When connecting to multiplayer, the game would crash pretty often, and sometimes fires would make the game crash as well. It was a rare occurrence, but it's definitely something that I ran into. And there's some other things, really the bugs and glitches aren't too bad, especially in a game like this where I mean, it's really not meant to be taken too seriously, but there's definitely some small things worth mentioning. And I will note that it's pretty hard to differentiate between cooked and uncooked food sometimes. When a food gets properly cooked, it changes color, but sometimes the changes aren't noticeable enough. You'll put something on a grill, you'll go and do other stuff, you come back and you kind of think, well, wait, it was this the same color as before, or does it still need to be cooked? You'd think the game could do something to make it easier on the player, and it really wouldn't be too hard, but alas. A bigger point to harp on is that the game does get repetitive. A lot of the fun in the game is kind of learning the recipes, how to maneuver through the map, and it's general hecticness. But once you do get the hang of it, once you do get into that routine and such, well, there's half the fun sucked out of it. This was especially noticeable on smaller and simpler maps with uncomplicated recipes that were easier to fill out. Hell, even on the bigger maps, the repetition definitely got real. It definitely makes the game feel a little disposable, which is alright for a free game, and I guess it's kind of to be expected anyways. That being said, I do think that the game would benefit from the addition of some sort of grading system. The game does, after all, have side objectives, such as throwing out a certain amount of trash or spending a certain amount of money, but there's really not much of an incentive to do so. Having a grading system based on whether or not these get accomplished could at least make a few people stick around for a little longer. There is one other mode, it's called Catering Mode. Catering Mode is the closest thing this game has to any sort of campaign or career mode. Instead of filling orders, 
levers as they come along, they're all laid out at the beginning and you just kind of have to complete them. But there's no time limit or incentive to complete them as fast as possible, which really reduces the challenge and just kind of makes it not very fun. Another problem I have with it is just the lack of variety within the levels. In each level, you're just serving one specific dish. So for example, in one level, you'll cook nothing but hot dogs. In another, you'll cook nothing but hamburger. It's the same recipe over and over again. I really don't know why it's designed this way. Why not have the player cook a variety of dishes within the levels? I don't know. Moreover, level progression is not as easy as just beating one level and moving on to the next. You have to buy new recipes, but to get the money to do so, you have to complete levels. The problem is buying new recipes costs so much money that if you want to progress, you'll have to replay levels to get the sufficient funds, which makes the mode very repetitive. And I guess this is kind of helped because the game has this weird oversight where you don't actually have to cook the food properly before serving it to the customers and you'll still get all the rewards for beating the level. I mean, sure, it cuts down on how much you have to grind, so I mean, that's good, I guess. But on the other hand, it, it takes away any incentive for the player to do well. Catering mode could have been interesting. It could have been a pretty good mode, a good addition to the game. But having to replay the same levels and making the same dishes over and over gets old fast. There's no real difficulty, and despite there being optional challenges that can be completed to earn skins and such, I moved on pretty quickly from it. I'm not really too upset by the catering mode being such a flop because it's really not the main attraction. It's a case where it's not that good of a mode, but it really doesn't matter because it takes a back seat to the main portion of the game. So that's kind of the game down to a T. It's a fun, simple game that really isn't meant to be taken too seriously. I could have gone more in depth about the little things, what I think is missing from the game and what it needs, what's wrong with it, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Most people are just going to care about the core gameplay and will probably only spend a couple hours on it. I don't think people are really going to care if some things aren't polished or fleshed out enough. Considering that, there's really no reason for me to dig into the game too much. I'm going to give this one a 6.5 out of 10. Now, is it a game that I'd recommend you spend your time on? Well, I think it's a somewhat unique media that does bring something new to the table, so I'd say the download wouldn't hurt. If you can, don't play this game alone. Try getting a friend or three, because like I said, it's a goofy novelty game that's mostly meant to be played as a laugh, and that sort of game is going to be a lot more fun with some friends around. But we're not done yet, because this game has DLC in the form of a few extra levels, so is it worth shelling out the money for this free game? Base and Beyond gives you three extra maps, each with their own recipes. Two are pretty similar, Earth Orbit and Asteroid Field. Both of these are zero gravity experiences with unique machinery, such as a grill that cooks food in zero gravity, a new dishwasher, and a gravity table to prepare food on. There is very little difference between the two maps, other than the recipes. Earth Orbits are more simple, and the ones in Asteroid Fields have more to them. I didn't really like these two maps. The zero gravity gimmick in general becomes a nuisance pretty quickly, as ingredients just get knocked about and float all over the place. Maybe it's good for a quick laugh, but it's not really my thing. Moon Base Munches was a little more bearable, because it's not zero gravity, it's more so low gravity, so ingredients are a lot easier to handle. Other than that, it's mostly typical, you're just making cakes. In the Drinks and Bars DLC, you have Naomi's Nightclub, Patrick's Pool Hall, and Carter's Coffee House. These revolve around mixing drinks to serve to customers, and nothing else. This DLC is the worst on offer. The levels are pretty similar to each other in terms of how they play. In fact, the nightclub and pool hall are basically the same level. They both have the same recipes, and you serve customers in the exact same way. It's a total illusion of content. But all three of the levels are absurdly easy. The reason the game was so fun initially was because you had to do so much at once, and the time limit was so restricting that you had to be as fast as possible, forcing you to fill out multiple orders at once. Not really the case here. Because you get a 60 second time bonus to each customer served, and each drink can be made and mixed relatively quickly, you're never really put in a position where you're hurting for time, and you can usually just focus on one order. They could have done something to make the game a little harder, like instead of setting the game in a pool hall or a nightclub, have it be a normal bar where food is served alongside drinks. And do the same for the cafe, because after all, most places that serve coffee don't just serve coffee. They usually have food items as well. I guess you could say that this DLC is truly a bland mix. Finally, Ships and Oceans, a surprisingly recent DLC. It features some new maps, although the pirate ship and fishing boat have the exact same recipes, but they do have different gimmicks. On the pirate ship level, there's another pirate ship that comes along and bombards your ship, so you have to use your cannons to fire back. I found that there's really no reason to do so. Getting hit by a cannonball doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't destroy the ship or set it on fire. It doesn't make the ingredients go flying all over the place. It's a minor annoyance, if even that. Uh, in the fishing boat, 
boat, you're cooking in a storm that causes your boat to violently rock every so often, causing ingredients to fly all over the place. Much like the zero gravity of the Space and Beyond DLC, this might be good for a quick laugh, but it's more of a nuisance than anything else. The cruise ship is probably the strongest entry of this DLC, featuring a unique new dish, sushi. You have to put rice into a cooker and roll it up. Pretty simple, but a nice little level overall. One problem though, there's a, there's no fire extinguisher, so if a fire breaks out, you're screwed. You literally can't do anything about it. They forgot to put a fire extinguisher in a map in a game where fire is the main hazard. That's just embarrassing. Three DLCs featuring three levels each. That makes nine, baby, and only two of them are actually good. Suffice to say, if you're planning on downloading this game, I wouldn't be too concerned with buying the additional content on sale. The DLC won't carry on your playtime for long, and at $12, you could do better with your money than buying this half-cooked DLC. So, too long didn't read, the game's worth trying out, the DLC isn't. I'll say this, I'll bet this reminds Jed over here about the time he worked at a restaurant. Uh, isn't that right, uh, Jed? <laughs> Uh, that's gonna do it for this episode of fun for free if you like the series consider subscribing to the channel So you catch all the new releases. We also review other games and movies as well So be on the lookout for those follow the Twitter join the discord. This is Mac cheese the Jetta signing out You all have a good one